So, wanting to take a moment to briefly share with you all about my own personal journey with the spirit of the rose. I feel truly deeply blessed to be walking this path and it's been interwoven in many aspects of my life since I was a young child. My mother, who was also a psychic, was deeply connected with roses and she always bought me roses as well and invited me to smell them, to immerse myself in them from a very young age. The second tattoo I ever got um, when I was 15 or 16 was a rose, <laughs> a red rose. And I got this in honour of my connection with my mother. But now I see the greater plan and it was actually in honour of my connection with myself and with the spirit of the rose. So I spent some time when I was young in my mother's home in Wales and she had built her own temple space and outside that temple space there was a, a magic circle of rose bushes that you could sit in the middle of and meditate and pray. And it was around this same time that I started finding out about the method of plant immersions and dietas and what eventually led to me on my journeys to the Amazon rainforest with working with different tribes with ayahuasca working with peyote, magic mushrooms, San Pedro. I started learning more about the dieta process and then the rose spirit began coming to me. <laughs> she came to me very strongly one time when I was experiencing a major grief and heartbreak. I had found out who I thought was the love of my life my partner at the time, he had kissed another woman and I just remember that feeling of my heart cracking open and literally splitting and I cried and I cried and I cried and a dear friend, a dear sister came to my home and she laid me on my bed and she covered me with roses that she had bought for me and she placed crystals all over my body and she lay next to me, or sat next to me and held my hand and let me process and cry. She held my hand and both the spirit of the rose and Mother Mary came towards me. I had been wanting to change my surname for a long time and in that moment Mother Mary came and she said, you are one of my children, I am here with you, you are not alone. Me and the spirit of the rose are here for you. And we want you to know that if you decide to change your name, you are welcome to call yourself Alexandria Rose. And it was a beautiful, beautiful confirmation and a beautiful acknowledgement. And so I decided to take that surname and really make the rose spirit part of my embodiment and part of my prayer of having a human body on this earth in this moment in time. I did a very strong rose dieta for myself where I gained a lot of insights and communication with the spirit of the rose and she really helped heal my heart after that trauma. And then since then I have undertaken many more rose dietas and I've held rose dietas in groups online and in person or one-to-one -one online or here from Peru. What I can say about my own journey with the spirit of the rose is that it's continually unfolding. Her spirit is such a mothering energy to me but also very strong. A lot of people take the rose for granted and think that she's soft and sweet and this divine feminine but from my lessons and my teachings with her she's actually helped me be stronger in my feminine and have way more boundaries because sometimes as a, a human on this earth whether we are a man or a woman we can be so empathetic towards others 
And that's a beautiful, beautiful space to be in, but not if you're giving from a place of pouring yourself out too much. And so you're giving from an empty cup. And for me personally, what the rose showed me is the boundaries. And I learned so many lessons just from making tea from her thorns and her stem. She gave me strength to be stronger in my spine, stronger in my physical and human body, but also stronger in my energetic body. So when people were seeing me as this soft, sweet, young woman who they could take advantage of, she helped me have the courage to say no. She helped me have the courage to stand up for myself and to say, I cannot give anymore. She helped me a lot in my work. Um, it can be a little confusing in these plant realms and people can really ask a lot of you and it's hard to give when you're giving from a place that that's not in a reciprocal energy. And she really taught me about this as well. I don't have physical communication with my own mother and I have not for a few years. And what I'm so deeply grateful for from the spirit of the rose and other plants, but it's mainly been the rose, is she has been that beautiful embodiment of the mother energy for me. I've always felt her there in the background knowing I can work with her if I feel lonely or if I feel sad and for me she intertwines so much with the deities I mentioned in my other videos Mother Mary and Mary Magdalena and it's very interesting how my own personal journey has mirrored my journey with the Dieta of the Roses as I've gone along on my path so when I started working with her I began working with the energy of the White Rose and Mother Mary and it was this sense of purification and cleansing and purity and forgiveness, forgiveness for myself and for other people. And then I moved into the energy of the Pink Rose which was much more embodied, had some beautiful playful energy, a very princess energy but also a lot of downloads about my future work and what I want to offer to the world. And it was like I had to do that purification and that clearing before I could move then into the energy of the pink rose and use that energy when I was working with my clients. It helped clear my channel, it helped me open to myself and it really began the process of having deeper self-respect and self-love and also seeing through the eyes of love. And I had to purify myself to a certain level before I could be more compassionate to myself and the world around me. And then I began moving into the energy of the Red Rose. And for me, the energy of the Red Rose represented me moving from the energy of maiden to mother. Not necessarily having a baby, but more the energy of stepping up, stepping into your queendom, stepping into your maturity, taking responsibility for yourself and for your life and for your clients, your friends and your relationships and that's what the Red Rose is still teaching me to this day as I'm still in that process working with her. She's teaching me a lot about being more sovereign, about taking my power back and being a queen, moving from princess to queen into a more embodied place also taking responsibility and being a mother to the plants, to the earth around me, to my friends, to my family, and yes, especially to my clients, those I hold yet as for. Well. And not flitting around and, you know, being in that maiden, which is beautiful as well, a beautiful space to be in. But she really taught me a lot about, no, this is the time to be more grounded with your work and with yourself and take responsibility for yourself for any health issues, for any dreams you may have, really now is the time to put that in action. So I'm still working with her in that way and the difference I found with the white and the pink, it was definitely much more Mother Mary energy and Kuan Yin energy. And as I began moving into the energy of the Red Rose, now what has been coming through is more wanting and a yearning of deepening in my studies of Egypt and I've been receiving a lot of beautiful transmissions from Mary Magdalene 
who is that beautiful embodiment of this queen energy, meeting her beloved, taking up space, using her body as her temple, as her practices, and really working with the rose energy with different lifetimes I've experienced um, of being a rose priestess in different ways. And now as I'm working with this Mary Magdalene, the red rose energy, I feel myself stepping more into the embodiment of all of my lifetimes, all of that wisdom, wearing my crown, really knowing in a deeper way who I am and being not afraid to show up for exactly who I am. And when I've sat in ayahuasca ceremonies whilst I'm working with the red rose, I've really downloaded uh, visuals and energies of being in the temples of Egypt and different gold frequencies and codes and working with the Ankh. And yes, for me personally, when my mother was pregnant with me, I came to her in a vision and I said, I want you to call me Alexandria, please, this is my name. Now as I'm working with the Red Rose and exploring and hopefully going to Egypt very soon, I am more connected to the famous libraries of Alexandria in Egypt and I'm seeing the unweaving and the unraveling and the re-remembering of all of this wisdom. So this is an ever unfolding path for me, myself and for many others who are exploring with the rose and whether that's beginning immersing yourself with her energy or simply drinking rose tea once a week or doing a course like an online dieta or a guided dieta by someone else. I wouldn't necessarily say the path of the rose is something that you can do in one week and then it's over. For me and for what I witness in so many of my clients is it's actually an unfolding of many different explorations and many who are called to this path have worked with the rose in other lifetimes or have a deep connection that isn't necessarily going to be all revealed within one week. It is a kind of general exploration that kind of goes in a spiral and comes back around. And for me personally, as I'm speaking about this and I'm looking back on all the years I've interacted with the Rose Spirit in so many different ways, I just see the deepening of our connection and the continual learning I have with her. And I create the tinctures with her and I am guided by her to create different tinctures at different times and use the energy of the rose because I'm so deeply connected to her spirit and she gives, people, gives me permission to use the energy of the rose alongside other plants. For example, I have worked and done a month-long dieta with a tree known as the Samauma or Lapuna Blanca, which is a huge ancient tree found in Brazil and Peru, and it's a feminine energy tree, and it's insanely big. You can sit in just one little nook of the tree, and it's so tall, and they're usually 700, 800, 900 years old, and the energy of the tree really showed me in that diet it's all about taking up space as a woman, and I was guided to make a tincture. And then the spirit of the rose came in with the Sama Uma and was like, yes, but I want to make this soft and easy for people to receive. So please use both of our medicines together. So I mixed the red, the white and the pink rose in with the Sama Uma tree because there's a kind of alchemy that the rose can bring. And she can open people up in a soft or in a strong way if you're working with boundaries. But her energy can open up this kind of sacred geometry as I, I perceive it for people to receive other medicines, to receive other teachings. So whether you just work with the rose by herself or you work with the rose alongside other medicines, it's a beautiful, beautiful journey. She works very well with cacao, ceremonial cacao. She works very well with ayahuasca and she works very well with wachuma as well. So it's a synergy, it's a meeting, and it's really a personal exploration as well. It's something to have fun with and to play with, whether that's blessing your body with rose petals, creating flower baths with roses, whether it's creating your own tinctures, your own body balms, your own uh, hydrosol sprays, filling your house with roses, planting rose bushes, making jams, making honey, 
cooking with rose petals, drying them and making them into yoni steams, or using them in a massage balm if you're a man, making them part of your lovemaking practice with your beloved. There's so many routes to explore with her. And I am so deeply grateful to be on this rose path, walking along, alongside so many beautiful men and women who are feeling this call. So thank you for listening to my personal story. And I really trust and pray that whoever is meant to connect with the spirit of the rose will do so in their own.